Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations here today to share with you a tutorial on this album that I made using my Design Team Package Papers Heartfelt Creations Rustic Sunflower Collection. And it's a really beautiful collection. And I've had fun um, trying to figure out how to use it for an album because it does have a lot of cut aparts in it. But I think I figured out some really cool things to do with it. So I have actually three tutorials um, kind of ready to film. I've been working really hard um, over the last week trying to get these done. And I think that I've been able to utilize the paper because you can see, if you look at it, there are a lot of cut aparts in this paper collection. But I've been able to um, kind of work with those to create a really fun album. Now, the one thing that you need to know, if you get this paper collection, and you should because it's absolutely gorgeous, is that the cut aparts, they're all different sizes too. So some of my measurements for this album are going to be a little bit interesting <laughs> to say, yeah, to put it mildly, I guess. Um, they will be a little interesting because some of the cut aparts, they're, they're all kind of different sizes, but I've worked with them and um, made some really pretty things. Um, I've also, if you can see, you have a paper that has the sunflowers and everything. I spent a lot of time fussy cutting these out and um, created some decorations. So let's go through and I'll show you what I've done with this album and then we're gonna go ahead and make it. So this album is seven by seven and it has a three, or excuse me, a two and five eighths inch spine. And the reason why it does have that is because of the way that I did the binding. I did kind of a different binding this time that I wanted to try out. And you're gonna see in this book, it's a little bit different than what we're gonna actually do in the tutorial because I had to alter it to make it work better. So we'll go over that in a minute. But I did do a little bit of a different binding system and a different page system, um, which is unusual for me. So on the cover here, I did fussy cut out the pail and some flowers and everything, and then I layered them. I used foam tape from Country Craft Creations, popped them up, put them on the cover, and I kind of overlapped them with this frame. This frame I got as part of my design team package um, is Prima wood frames and it comes in a package of three and I really wanted to use it. I thought it would be a beautiful cover element for my project. So I actually, it is a frame. The back does come out just like a photo frame and I put one of the cut aparts inside of it and then actually glued it right onto the cover and then layered the flower configuration over it and it just turned out really pretty. I really liked how it did. The paper collection comes with little ladybugs that you could fussy cut out if you want, but I decided <laughs> that I had I had some little wooden ladybugs in my stash, so I used those instead. And actually, they're about the same size as the ladybugs that are on the paper collection, because like this one actually sits right over top of one of the ladybugs. But I just put a few ladybugs on there, and I just I think the the cover just really pops. Um, I did a simple seam binding closure. I used um, ivory. I think it's ivory, um, seam binding from Country Craft Creations. Just did a simple closure. On the spine here, I did a charm assembly and added some more ladybugs here. Um, and I'm going to uh, share with you, I figured out how to use a brad and a jump ring to create a spot that you could put you know, a, um, a charm assembly on. So basically, let me show you that really quick. All you need is a brad that has a space and I, I know it's kind of hard to see here but mm, it has kind of a space between the tines and the back of the brad and all you really need to do in order to do this is just open up the tines just a little bit and throw the brad on the floor because then it helps your tutorial right <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try and hold on to this, and then you just slip your jump ring in there, and it's in that space, okay? So now you have a brad with a jump ring basically attached to it, and then you just pop your hole in your paper, put that through, and then this is where you can hang your charm assembly. So that's how I attached this. I did a double mat with the pattern paper and some brown artisan cardstock and I popped my hole through that and then um, put that attachment onto the spine and then hung my charm assembly. I had these from my stash and they're little 
um, flower, um, a water pitcher with flowers and a little flower pot and then this flower here. And I just thought it matched the collection pretty well. So just tied a bow around the top of the chain and then I have my charm. The back of the album is um, pretty plain. I did double mat um, that. So then when you open it up, this album, so we'll open it up on the inside front and the back covers. I just did a simple triangle pocket. And the reason why I did them, this one on this side and then this one here instead of over in this corner is because I really wanted to show off the papers on this side. And then um, I just covered it with some patterned paper. I layered some flowers with another ladybug. And then I just put some of the tags from the collection in there, backed them with artisan cardstock, and then one of the um, journaling cards there. So I did that on both sides here. So we have little tags and a journaling card that I just tucked in that pocket. And again, I did the layering of the flowers that I fussy cut out. Spent a lot of time watching TV while I was doing this. So, <laughs> but it was pretty easy to do. Um, so then I had this binding idea and originally the binding idea came because I watched one of Bobby's tutorials. She's one of our other designers and she did this really fun mini album with this, these strips of bindings and it kind of gave me an idea. So I thought I wanted to try it. So what I did was I, I kind of used some pieces of binding to put my pages on and that was, that was my original idea wasn't very strong and so I ended up having to in between the pages put another binding strip we're not going to do this today I don't recommend it because it was kind of um it's it's not as sturdy as I was hoping it was going to be so we're going to do one piece um instead of like three pieces so we'll do one piece per binding section it's going to be a lot easier it's going to be a lot more sturdy too so kind of ignore the binding pieces for now we're going to do them similar not quite like this but but I had the idea because I got the inspiration from Bobby and she made the, just the most adorable little albums. And then that kind of spawned an idea that I had. So I'm going to link that tutorial down below so you can go check out her tutorial. The binding is, is not the same, but it did inspire me. And that's what I love about this design team because we all inspire each other. Um, you know, you see things and it just gives you an idea. And that's kind of where I got this idea. So I just wanted to share that. So the pages are very simple. There are four large pages and they come out like so. And I just did basic, um, use the six by six papers on this. And then I used some artisan cardstock. I used brown and I used natural for this book. And then like on this page here, I did the fussy cutting with the picture and some flowers. And then I put some tags here. On this page, this page is the same. They're all the same. They're cut from one piece of cardstock, and then I just simply score them. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and then I added ladybugs and stuff like that. But then the inner pages are different. Now, these are the cut aparts. They are different sizes in this paper collection. So I was like, what am I going to do with this? So I went ahead and I used this little fancy binding thing, which we're going to modify um, during the tutorial. But I like the fact that the binding has some um, beautiful papers on it and it actually kind of shows. So I, I that's kind of where I was going with that. But this cut apart page here opens up like that for nice photo mats. And then this cut apart page here opens like this. Okay. And then we have two more of the larger um, pages. Okay. So I'll just flip through real quick. Some of them I added cut apart. Some of them I didn't. Okay. Made pockets out of some of the papers that were left over. All right, so that's our book. So it's going to have four large pages, and these are these right here. Um, the the page itself is six by or six and a half by six and a half, and then these are five and a half by six and a half. So they're they're good sized pages, and you have four of those, and then you have the two kind of middle inserts. So we're going to create that today. I'm going to use a different paper collection, and I spent some time yesterday kind of uh, working with this. And then another thing that I wanted to share is that I am trying something a little bit different with my covers. And I'm just gonna share with you what I did. So I made 
The covers for this, you will need two pieces of chipboard that are seven by seven and one piece for the spine that's two and five eighths by seven. Um, this, the binding system is going to have a three eighths inch gusset all the way around instead of a half an inch. And, um, the reason I did that is because it's going to have six pages and I didn't want the spine to be too wide. So I shortened it to three eighths of an inch for gussets instead of one half. So that's why I did that. The cardstock, you'll need to do your cover two at nine by nine, one at six by nine and one at six by six and seven eighths. So I'm using the lay flat method that hasn't changed. So I took my two big pieces and I covered it with the cardstock already. And then I did my spine piece the same exact way that I always do it. Okay, so that's all prepared and ready to go. What's different about this is that um, during the retreat that I went to in April, Nicole um, was doing a tutorial and she put some space in between her spine and her covers. Now I have been kind of butting these right up against the spine and it works really great, but she actually added a little bit of space in between the spine and her cover and so I decided I wanted to try it and I really like it so what I'm gonna do instead of when I lay this down um, how I've been doing it is been just butting it right up against that spine okay so you really don't have any space between the spine what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this square tape off and I'm going to lay this down now the way that it it's laying down, it's lining up at the four and a half inch mark. So I'm gonna leave an eighth inch of um, space in between my pieces. Now the other way that you can do this is to grab one of your spacers, and if you lay it on your side, that's about an eighth of an inch, and you can lay this down right up against there, and just go ahead and, I'm using my scoreboard to make sure everything's nice and straight, and lay that down. So you have like a little bit of space in between. And I am kind of actually digging that. Um, it's working out pretty well. And the spine, the, the it doesn't kind of compete with that. And so I really like that. So Nicole has been doing that. I'm gonna put a link to her YouTube channel as well so that you can check that out. But that was her idea, not my idea, just to give a little bit of extra space there. And I really like the way that that's working out. So again, I'm just gonna lay this down. And um, the thing to remember is don't put your score tape too close because obviously you're gonna want that space kind of open and we're going to just lay our pieces down okay so you can either do it with this and lay it down or you can eyeball it um, with your um, scoreboard okay so either way and i'm going to actually turn this around because then i can see it a little bit better and i can hold it and i'm hopelessly right-handed so that'll help me <laughs> with putting the cover on. So basically, I'm just gonna do that. So, yes, I want it like that. Okay, I'm just checking to see what my orientation of my papers are. All right, um, and then I'm just gonna lay this down just right up against there, and that's gonna give a little bit of, a um, little bit of wiggle room, okay? So, um, that is basically the difference in the spine. Otherwise, I did it just exactly the way that I do it when I do my lay flat method. So then I'm just gonna kind of burnish those down, okay? And then I'm gonna grab my inside piece and I'm gonna just lay that down over top. If I can get the score tape sheet off. And do, oops. I want to make sure it's even top and bottom so I'm just going to turn it sideways and do that and then I'm going to burnish that down and then I'm still going to kind of fold it up and kind of go in that crease where the spine and the cover meet And there you go. Then you have a beautiful cover here, ready, ready to go. All right. 
and that's how it'll look. So it looks great. Okay, so that's the cover done. The next thing that we're going to do is I need to actually cover this album, um, especially on the inside, because you do need to put the covers down um, here, the pattern paper down before you put the binding strips on. So we're going to go ahead. I have already prepared my pieces. Um, these are going to be for the outside cover. I'm going to just put those to the side for right now. And then we're going to do the inside cover. And I did prepare these pieces. So I have my pieces here. And again, I'm going to put the pockets in the same orientation that I did. I made these pockets a little bit bigger than I did the other ones. So these measure, and they're really super simple. Let me grab my ruler. These measure, so the card stock that I'm using, oh, and I, you know what, you know what, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you what this is. So, you guys, what I'm doing for this tutorial, um, the papers that I'm using for this is the Heart of Courage, and this is by Country Craft Creations, and all of the sales for the, pro, or the proceeds for the sale of this paper is going to a charity that Tammy found um, that is going to send it to the Ukraine to help them. So, if you go to Country Craft Creations, you can get this paper. Um, I got it a couple well I got it when it first came out and um, I thought when I was making or you know doing this tutorial I thought well I'm gonna go ahead and use those papers for this tutorial because you do have to put you know your pattern paper down on the spine okay so all that being said now um, this the covers are seven by seven the inside I did not double mat the pattern paper I did double mat the pocket and these pockets, if you cut a five by five square and then cut it at the diagonal, that's gonna give you your pocket. And then I went ahead and cut the pattern paper um, at four and three quarters and then cut that in the diagonal and then that covers it and then that gives you that nice pocket here, okay? Um, on the outside, I did double mat. So I did um, cut these papers and double map them and um, on this I did give use actually a quarter of an inch so this is seven by seven I hope I said that right earlier the pattern paper is six and three quarters by six and three quarters so everything in this particular album I did um, at basically a quarter of an inch smaller for the pages I hope that makes sense for the matting and all that okay so I'm just gonna glue this down and We'll glue this spine down. And for the cover, we do have to remember that we're going to put our seam binding for my closure. So we do need to remember to do that. So I'm just going to line this up like so. This paper is just so pretty. I love 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 the colors on this okay and our spine um again whoo that was cute um our spine is two and five eighths inch wide so i cut this at two and three eighths inch wide and that's going to go down like so right in the middle and you could double mat these if you wanted to. I just chose not to. A little bit of contrast between the front, you know, the covers and all that. And I did use an 8x8 eight eight paper pack. And I pretty much, I had two 8x8 eight eight paper packs. And I pretty much used an entire one for this um, album. Um, if you're using 12 by 12 papers, you obviously aren't going to use as many, you know, pages. All right. Okay. So we have that. Now let's do, let's go ahead and do our covers here real quick. So I have seam binding here in deep Navy and in goldenrod, I believe it's called. And I'm going to use these for the closure and I'm just going to go ahead and use two of them. So I'm just going to center. The album is, um, I think it like bigger one. Here, the album is, um, no, I'm not. Seven by seven. So I'm doing the center at three and a half. 
and you can stack them however you want. I think I want the yellow showing. I love the contrast of the blue and the yellow. I think it's really a gorgeous combination. So I'm just gonna do, just, just lay them on top of each other at the three and a half inch mark there. Center that and do it on the other side. Put the blue down first. Okay, so I have that. Get that out of the way. I'm going to make sure. Yep, okay. And then we'll go ahead and just making sure my orientation is correct. So I'm going to put these down. And I think I'm going to want that like that. This one I'm not going to do a charm because I didn't have anything that I thought would really, um, you know, match charm wise. So we're just going to not do a charm on this one. And then I'm going to lay this down here like so. Over, isn't this gorgeous? I just love this collection. Okay, all right, so I'm using artisan cardstock and I'm using it in burgundy and in natural. Um, burgundy is going to go away. She does have um, quite a bit of the eight and a half by 11 in this color, but it is going to be discontinued. So if that's something that you want, you know, to pick up, go to Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com and pick some up because it is not going to be, I just, I got my, redid my glue holder with a little bit of water in it and I'm making a mess. That's how I keep my tip of my glue basically. I've uh, figured out a system to keep my glue so I don't get all clogged up during my <laughs> tutorials but it's a little drippy today usually not but I just redid it this morning so it's a little bit drippy okay so there's our cover to the album and there's the inside okay so we're gonna put this to the side for just a sec and let's grab and talk about our pages we'll do those and we'll get the binding and then we'll put it all together okay so I've already made um, some of the pages all right so for the larger pages, you're going to need four that are 12 by six and a half. And we're going to just take the scoreboard. We're going to put it in at the 12 and we're going to score at six and a half. All right. So that's going to give you a six and a half by six and a half inch page and a five and a half by six and a half inch page. Okay. And basically that's it that is your page you can add pockets to it if you want you can do all kinds of stuff but we're just doing the basic page for right now so um i did my pieces so on the outside and how i'm going to do it on this one so if you remember where's my book so on this one all of the pages are basically folded the same way so the big pages on the front and the smaller pages on the back this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it so that this side actually goes to the inside like that so I have them in a in a different little orientation here but you can do them either way you want so I have these in the order that I want them so this is going to lay like this and when you open it up it'll be like that hope that makes sense it will when we put it together so i'm just going to grab my glue again and i have already prepared my pieces so the 
cardstock is six and a quarter by six and a quarter and then the pattern paper is six by six and again the reason why i designed it this way is because of the cut aparts in the heartfelt creations it had a lot of six by six cut aparts and so i was using those in my pages right so all of all of these were six by six page cut aparts all of them so that's how i ended up designing the album like this okay so then this one here will go on the back side so that when we open our book it'll match up and then I've created the insides. And then we'll talk about the inside because I kind of had an aha moment last night and did something kind of fun with one of the punches that I've had in my stash forever. Okay. Okay, so on the inside, of these pages what I did was I kept it fairly simple and we're going to do photo mats so again I did the burgundy cardstock at six and a quarter by six and a quarter and then the what the um, natural is six by six so on this one here I took a strip of pattern paper that was left over and I just cut a half inch strip and I put it down the middle and I used a punch with a heart because if you notice there's lots of hearts in this collection so i mimicked that and then there's also some butterflies and so i took a butterfly punch and i just put that in the middle of the heart but i glued it so that you could stick a photo let me see underneath the heart so that you could put two photos here okay so we're going to just stick that down like that now you know you don't have to double mat this particular section if you don't want to if you use of course just burgundy you could do that as well um i just kind of liked the way it looked this way all right um so we're going to glue that down and then on here i made photo corners so these Actually, you can tuck a picture underneath, and so you could put kind of a large picture in there if you wanted to. And how I did that was I had this aha moment. So I had this punch in my drawer, and so what I did was, you know, punched out the shape, and then basically I cut it into quarters, and then that created my photo corners, okay? So I just took this fancy square punch that I had, and I cannot get my fingers to work today. I am so sorry, guys. Um, and then I just cut it in half and then cut it in half again, and then that gave me my photo corner, and I just put glue on the corners and then glued that down. So I just went through my scraps of pattern papers and um, picked the ones I wanted, did that square, cut it up, and then I glued it down. And then at all four corners, you can tuck a picture underneath. So that's how I did my photo corners on these pages. Good gravy. My little glue is squirting. It's a brand new bottle too. <laughs> all right. So we'll just lay that down. So the pages are prepared. We're gonna use four of these large pages, okay? So again, each of the pages are six and a half tall by 12, okay? And when you lay these down, this is how they're gonna present in your book, except for this one, ignore this one for right now. So the big pages will be like this, okay? Um, Oh, that one goes like that and then like that okay so that's how I'm going to do my pages this time so those are the four big pages and then because the heartfelt creation papers have all these fancy cut apart so let me show you again because they are not they're not like the usual sizes um this one here for example is five and a quarter by like Four. This one here is like four and an eighth 
by five and a quarter. Um, they're all kind of weird, wonky sizes, which is fun because it's different. Um, but it also was kind of challenging to use. So um, when I did that, I had to kind of conform my pages to that. Um, for this tutorial, what I did was um, I designed this one to use a three by four cut apart. Um, this one here is designed to use a four by six cut apart. But again, all you have to do is when you when you have your cut aparts, when you use this paper here, so basically what I did was I cut the paper, the cardstock, because this one here only goes to five, right? So I cut the cardstock so that it fit the cut aparts. I hope that makes sense. And I cut the cardstock at a quarter of an inch bigger than the cut apart and then just folded it, you know, and made the um, score. I hope that makes sense. It ought to make sense. It's 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 not too terribly hard to figure out, um, but that's what I did. So, if, like for example, for this one, the three by four cut apart, um, you need a piece that's nine by three and a half. Okay, so then I scored it at four and a half, and then covered it with patterned papers, and then on the inside, I just used the burgundy mats, and that's all I did for that one. Okay, so again, this one here will fit, and the pattern paper here is a three by four piece of paper, so this will fit that. It's nine by three and a half, okay? Hope that makes sense. So that's one little tiny page. So for this one here, because I kind of wanted to you do it for a four by six cut apart, on this one here, it's gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna have a piece here and then when you open it up, we will also have like our four by six cut apart here and then we'll have a photo mat here and on the back, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know because I know it's a little bit um, funny how I did this. It's a little bit different, a little bit new, but it's not that tough um, to figure out. And it depends on which cut aparts you use from the Heartfelt Creations um, as to which, you know, how big you cut your papers. Okay, hope that makes sense. All right, so this is gonna flip up. That'll go here. If you're using different papers, then again, this is this is kind of the standard cut aparts for three by four and four by six. Okay, so that's that's where we're going with that. Let me see here. I didn't quite get that straight. It's kind of early. I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm a little tired, but that's okay. So I'd already prepared these. Now this particular paper collection didn't really have four by six cut aparts, so I used the cut aparts that it had and backed it on the paper. So, so the mats for these will be a quarter of an inch smaller. So since the actual page is six and a half by four and a half, I cut the mats at six and a quarter by four and a quarter, you know, and so on, okay? This is a little bit different album for me. I hope you like it. A little bit different. I just got this idea. Now, <laughs> I do have to admit, so I normally always, 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 always do a prototype album first before I use my design team papers because I really want to make sure that I try and get everything just so and it works just right so that when you know, I teach it to you guys, then, you know, it's basically as perfect as I can make it. And I didn't do that with this time. And I really wish I would have, because otherwise I wouldn't have done the, the little teeny tiny binding pieces that I did. That's for sure. Okay. So these pages will go in here in the middle. And this is the other thing that I wanted as I kind of wanted like this little graduated page thing. So it's really fun to have the two big pages. Okay. With the flips, 
and then have two kind of smaller page flips in there, okay? So basically we have our pages done. So you have the four big pages, we have the smaller page that we made for the three by four cut aparts. And again, that one is nine by three and a half and we're gonna just score it on the nine at four and a half. And then on this next one here, the bigger page for the four by six cut aparts, we're gonna have a four and a half by 12. We're gonna score on the 12 at six and a half. And that's going to give you a page that's four and a half by six and a half, and then a page that's four and a half by five and a half. Okay, kind of like the big pages, except in a different orientation, basically. Does that make sense? Okay, so now what we need to do is do the binding. Now, this is where we're going to kind of deviate from what I did originally. Because again, let's remind you originally, and this was my first attempt at this album, and this didn't work as well in my head, or getting it out on paper, I should say, than it did in, in my head. So I had to add some extra pieces. So we're going to just do this all in one chunk today, okay? But the cool part is, is it's going to attach your pages. You're still going to have your quarter inch wiggle room space that I like. And we're going to be able to actually cover the binding pieces and have it be kind of part of the decoration of the album, which is kind of fun. Okay. So that's why we had to cover the book first. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some binding pieces here. Let me get these pieces kind of straightened. For the out. binding pieces, you're going to need three pieces of cardstock. Two of them will be at five by one and seven eighths, and one will be three by one and seven eighths. This is going to have a three eighths inch gusset um, between the pages, all the pages, and before and after as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for a second. I've already prepared the two five inch pieces, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to put that in your scoreboard. We're going to score them all the same and score them. And then I've already prepared these with the pattern papers, okay? So these are just the two five inch pieces. I'm going to go through the three inch piece with you. And then you basically do the same thing for these. You just need obviously longer pieces of pattern paper to cover it. And I just use scraps after I made all my pages. So you'll put it in with the one and seven eighths inch at the top. You're gonna score it one half at three quarters at one and an eighth and one and three eighths, okay? So again, you're gonna score it half, three quarters, one and an eighth, one and three eighths. Okay, that's going to give you these sections. So the first two sections should be a half an inch and then you have two sections that are a quarter of an inch. That's gonna be your quarter of an inch give space. And then you have a middle section that's three eighths of an inch. That's going to adhere to your spine, okay? And, and these half inch pieces here will attach to your pages. So we're gonna get this out of the way and we're gonna fold and burnish everything, okay? So the half inch on the outside, that's what's going to attach to our pages. And then you have your quarter of an inch give space. And you'll have a 3 8 inch space that's going to attach to your spine. Okay? So you should have a piece that kind of looks like that. Okay? You should have one, two, three, four, five sections in this. Okay? So you'll have a half inch, quarter, 3 8 one quarter, one half. Okay, that's the sections you're gonna have. And then I went ahead and cut my pattern papers to go ahead and add to them. So I cut these um, at one eighth of an inch smaller than, oh my goodness, I put a little too much water in my little thing there. Okay, so you're gonna cut these at one eighth inch smaller. Okay, so for this one here, it's three eighths by one half, so I cut it at, three eighths by one half, it's three inches by one half, so I cut the pattern papers at two and seven eighths by three eighths, okay? So I'm just gonna cover that, get these ready. This is a little fiddly to do if you do it 
after they're in there. So I decided that this time I was going to just put the pattern papers on now and be done with it. So this is the outside of our binding. You can imagine our binding is attached right now. These are going to be the outside pieces. So this inside piece here is what's going to be showing when you open your pages. So this piece here is a quarter of an inch. by two and seven eighths, and I'm just gonna put that inside, okay? So now all of my pieces are covered, okay? The way that I want them, then we're gonna put them in the book and then we'll attach pages and then we're done. So these are going to be put down at three eighths of an inch. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to use my little pad here because I'm going to use it to help me line things up. So I'm gonna, the end of my car, or chipboard here, I'm gonna line that up in one of the black lines there because I wanna make sure that I get this lined up really nice. And then I'm gonna use my ruler against that black line there and make sure that I've got everything nice and straight, okay? And I believe that, let me double check again, because I want everything nice and, nice and straight. All right, so I'm going to line this up three eighths of an inch Okay, and this is where I'm going to start lining this up, and I want to make sure that this is centered. So my book is seven inches tall, so I'm going to make sure that my zero is in the center, three and a half on each side. I'm going to grab one of your bigger pieces, okay, and make sure that the paper orientation is correct, okay. I'm going to fold it so that the three-eighths inch is here in the middle. Put my glue down. And I'm going to line this up. This is five inches, so it should line up at two and a half. Okay, you should have a little bit of pattern paper showing from the spine. This is why we have to cover the spine first. And then just make sure that there's no glue seeping out where you don't want it. Okay, burnish that down. Make sure we get a good stick. Now my original design used, I was thinking two pieces. That's how I started it. Piece here, piece here. It wasn't strong enough, so I added the middle piece after the fact, okay? Um, which helped make sure that this project worked out really nice. But because it was really fiddly with all the different pieces, that's why I combined it into one large piece, okay? So that's why we're doing it this way instead of this way. So you guys get to see what not to do. I'm teaching you how not to do it. <laughs> and this is why I do prototypes because it drives me crazy when I mess up and I don't like messing up my pattern papers. Okay, so from this point on, we're gonna do three eighths of an inch and then um, we're gonna fold this over. I'm gonna line up my ruler again Okay, and I'm actually lining it up to the base of that piece. I'm going to grab my smaller piece this time because the smaller piece goes next into the middle. All right, so making sure we got half an inch, or not half an inch, we got three eighths of an inch. Okay, this is a three inch piece. So we should have it at one and a half, three eighths inch in between. Okay. And again, I did this because as far as the three eighths inch, because I didn't want the spine to be too big because this is gonna be six pages. Um, and I didn't want the spine to be too big. Okay. I'm just going to do that. Okay, so there's that binding piece. All right, and then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to line this up. Okay. 
I'm going to try and make sure everything's nice and straight. And we're going to put the last piece on. Okay. So we're going to grab our last piece, making sure the orientation of the paper is good, if, if there is one. And on this one there is. Okay. Putting my glue down. So three-eighths of an inch from the last one. And we're going to put this... This is five inch, five inches, so about two and a half, and there we go. And you should have a nice border on the other side as well. So that's our binding, okay? All right, so then what we're gonna do is add our pages, okay? So this will hold six pages, so what we're gonna do I'm going to grab our pages, make sure they're in the order that you want them. And this binding, as I said, is going to become part of the decoration of the page. So we're basically going to start here and we're going to just glue them right directly onto the page. That's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on this half inch piece. Okay, this page is six and a half, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna open it up because I think that'll be easier. I'm gonna lay it down. It's going to have about a quarter of an inch top and bottom, okay? So, and then I'm just going to glue that down, and that's it. Okay. I just eyeballed that center there, but that is that is how you bind your page. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's a little bit different, which I kind of like. Then you just line this page up with the previous page, and we're going to glue that down. So I'm gonna put glue on my binding piece. Now I have to say I did do a practice piece with this and it worked out great and it was very sturdy. I would not probably um, put a whole lot of stuff on these pages, okay, um, as far as like making them super heavy. But look at how cute that is. You have this kind of pretty little binding edge, but when you open it up, It'll look like that. So I think it's really kind of cute. I like it. I like it. I didn't get that quite straight. I'm going to redo this part. Okay. There we go. There we go. That's more better. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm loving how this is turning out. Um, I just think it's really super pretty. Now, the shorter pages, the same thing. You're just going to center them and put them down like so, okay? So I'm gonna just open up this. I'm gonna put some glue down. And if it's easier, open up your page, okay? And you can use your ruler. I think I'm going to just eyeball this and lay that down so you're right in the score. Okay. And then this will fold down like that. And that will be that page. Okay. And again, so here's the front. Uh, actually, we're going to do it like this because that will work out, I think, better. Well, you could do it either way, I suppose. Let's just do it this way. All right, so we're going to line this up. Now, these are going to be the same height as the other pages, so you can use those as a guide. 
Okay, and we're just gonna glue that down right like that. And then this page here, you could decorate with something else too. If you didn't wanna have the full, you know, um, photo mat there. So I'm gonna just use this as a guide and then just fold that over. Lower that just a little bit. There we go. What did I do? Nope, I did it wrong. Shoot. Oh, dadgummit. All right, so screwed that up. Um, so we are going to do it on the back side of that photo map. So I did mess this up. I'm going to have to fix that and I will, I am doing a lot of things weird on this album, I tell you what, but yeah. And the reason why is because when you flip it up, you want the hope to be in the right orientation, right? So this is again, another thing that I messed up. Um, and this is why I do prototypes. I am not doing this again as far as trying to design an album without making a prototype, a practice piece first. <laughs> I am not doing this again. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And the edge of this will be at the top. So this one is not going to be quite centered, okay? Um, because I basically want that bottom page to be like this, okay? So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to center or kind of line this up with the top of that page. Maybe today I'll get this done. All right. feel like this tutorial is one giant blooper reel. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, I'm cracking myself up. Okay, so I have that glued down. All right, this actually really works well when it works well. Put that down and there you go. Okay, so now you have the photo mat here. You can totally like open this up. You can do that. I'm going to have to fix this part and I will figure that out. But there you go. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to add our next pages. And again, we're just going to put the glue. All right. So this is kind of, I guess, like a, well, it's kind of an exposed hinge. It's not really a hidden hinge. It's an exposed hinge. I'm not really sure, like, what exactly to call it. I just thought it was kind of pretty to do it this way. Um, because then you could use, a, you know, extra scraps of your pattern papers. And, you know, utilize them in a pretty way. And you still have the give space and all that. So I kind of liked it. All right. So last one. Thank goodness, huh? Thank goodness. So I'm going to leave most of these bloopers in because this is just getting to be too funny for me. So I hope you enjoy it. Please let me know. Um, yeah. And I'm not doing this again. I am not going to do an album without a prototype <laughs> ever again. Oh, gosh. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> I tried to do it with all of the projects um, for this particular paper collection, and it's just not working well for me. So I got to go back to my old method of making sure that everything works. Okay. Here we go. All right. Because I still end up making two albums anyway. So, you know, might as well, right? Okay. I just can't design on the fly. It makes me nervous. Okay. So, we got our pages done. So, that's our pages. Now, this is going to be a way more sturdy binding than the other way that I did it. Okay. 
So we have our pages. Let's flip through real quick. We have our pages here. This one will flip open like that. Isn't that gorgeous? Lots of opportunity for photos. Okay. Lots of beautiful ways to see the papers. Just gorgeous. And, and the binding kind of makes a nice accent to the pages. So very cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Now let's talk decoration. Let's talk decoration. All right. So I have some flowers, some bling from a previous design team package. Um, I have some flowers that I bought from Country Craft Creations, and I've obviously used some of them. I had um, another frame because the frames, the Prima frames come in a pack of three. So I took them apart. They are frames. They're, they're frames. Um, I took it apart. I put pattern paper on there, a little cut apart that I did have to trim down. I put some bling on there. So this is going to go on my front cover up in the corner, okay, because again, I want to show off these um, beautiful pattern papers, okay? Um, this is part of the cover sheet to the pattern papers, and I thought that I would put this somewhere, and I don't know whether I'm gonna put it up here or inside the album somewhere, but I am gonna put this somewhere in the album. Um, I maybe could put it on the spine too. That could be a nice spine piece as well. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I am gonna do it. So basically, I just cut out the title of the cover page to the pattern paper, backed it on some cardstock and some pattern paper. Kind of did some layers. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use this. Um, I am going to, I did put make some tags. So these are just tags that I created with leftover pieces. I used some more of the seam binding to create the, the ties. These buttons came from Country Craft Creations, and they are in a beautiful big package with a ton of buttons. And I simply just made my tag, and these tags are three and a half by five and three quarters. And the pattern paper is three and a quarter by five and a half. Punched a hole, set an eyelet, put the seam binding through the eyelet, eyelet, excuse me, and then I did twine through the button all the way around the seam binding and tied a bow. And this twine did come from my stash, so I did do that. And I always set my knot with a piece uh, or a little drop of fray check because it kind of helps glue it and um, prepare it. So I made four tags. So we'll have a tag, two tags for each pocket. And I'm probably going to trim those the uh, fluff down a little bit, I think, but there you go. You have your tags here. So we're going to have that and um, I'm going to put this on. Now I do want to show you that's, that's basically the construction of the album. So I'll finish the decoration and I will show you that, but I do want to show you kind of what I did with the front cover of this and how I kind of created that. So I loved the floral on here. And I really wanted to make something that kind of poofed. So what I ended up doing is I fussy cut out this bucket. And for this one here, I'm going to use this um, milk pail. And I fussy cut out some flowers. And I'm going to show you what I did. So all I did was I took my um, X-Acto knife. And I wanted to kind of make it look like the flowers were in the pot. So I just took and cut and I just freehand cut this slit in the top, okay? The bucket had another um, piece too. So like, here's the bucket. So I basically just cut a slit, you know, so that it would look like I was gonna use the bucket, okay? And then I took my flowers, so I picked out I, and I fussy cut out all of these. So again, I, I, you know, was watching a TV show and voila, I just did it. Um, wasn't too terribly hard. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this larger flower and then this larger one with the leaf. And I'm just going to kind of line up the petals so that it looks a little more fluffy. Okay, so I'm going to do that to two of them. So these are the two of the bigger ones 
that are in that um, collection. So I'm just going to kind of just layer those. They look a little more fluffy. And then this one here is a little smaller. So I'm going to do this with a little smaller one. Let's see if I can get that right. Something like that. All right. And I'm only gluing the centers because I actually kind of want to fluff those up just a little bit. Okay. And this one, obviously, I added some more flowers. I did um, an extra one here um, to kind of fit over the frame. So that's how I did that. And then basically what I did was I stuffed them in here and had the leaves kind of coming out like so and then this one here the smaller one i think what i'll do is i will put him in the front so you can do these with as many or as few as you want and i'm just tucking them in that right there and then you just kind of put them where you want them so they kind of look like they're in the milk jug okay and if you look at the back if you're happy with it you can see that the little stems are through the milk jug okay so just make sure you kind of have them where you want them okay as high or as as low as you want and then I grabbed a piece of my score tape just to kind of secure them I'm going to grab another piece. Okay, so they're secured at this point. And then I used foam tape on the back. So I grabbed my foam tape. This is from Country Craft Creations. I had a ginormous roll of this, and I'm actually at the point where um, I probably need to get some more. That's for sure. And then I just put some foam tape on the back of this to fluff it up. Kind of give it a little dimension on the page. Okay, like so. And then just kind of fill in the blanks as you need to. So I'm gonna put one like right in the middle there. I'll put one maybe right here. I'm going to put one maybe here and a little piece on that edge. Okay, so then when I'm ready, I can just lay this down. Now you can glue this guy down a little bit, kind of tack him down if you want. Um, which we probably should, maybe just a little bit. On the backs of the leaves just to kind of stabilize him okay all right and then I grab my little ladybug now these are also in the pattern paper and you can go ahead and you can fussy cut that out if you want um, but I had these in my stash so I thought well I'm gonna use these little guys they are little teeny tiny painted wooden butter or uh, ladybugs that I had and they actually had some foam dots on them but I tore those off and then I'm just going to glue those down. So that's basically how I did that. And then when you put this down, you can, you can fluff it up. You can, you can put more flowers on there. Let me show you. Um, this is what I did. I spent time kind of cutting everything out and then grouping them together. So I, yeah, there was a lot. There's these little teeny tiny tags, oops, excuse me, that come in the paper collection for the heartfelt creations. You have leaves. Here's those little ladybugs. Um, all the different size flowers. You have flowers like that. Um, you also have flowers that look like this. So I fussy cut all of these out so that I could use them for my decorations. So they're all ready to go. Um, so I can add more to that if I want to. Um, I have two other projects that I'm going to share with you. So I might be using those. But anyway, that's how I did that. Um, for a cover decoration. So obviously this one is the pail. This one's the milk pail. So it'll be a little bit different, but I just laid the first one down and then kind of added a little bit on top. And that's how I did that on this frame. Okay. So 
Uh, that's basically the end of the tutorial. I'm going to decorate this book um, that we made on camera today, and then I will um, come back and I will share with you what that ended up looking like. Okay, I'm back to share with you how I decorated this album, and I did use the frame, and again, um, I just took it apart put pattern paper in there, used a couple jewels. Um, the flowers that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial, the red ones are from Graphic 45. Uh, the yellow ones are 49 in market and they're all available at Country Craft Creations, or that's where I got them anyway. Um, I used natural and burgundy cardstock for the papers. And then I also used Heart of Courage um, that are papers that all proceeds will go to the Ukraine. Um, so go check out Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com. But um, I just think that the cover is really pretty. I used the seam binding in Deep Navy and Goldenrod um, to do the closure. On the spine, I just added a couple of the gems that I did get from Country Craft Creations in a previous design team package. They are by Prima. And I had them in a previous uh, design team package and I just thought that the colors, you know, matched everything perfectly. So I just added a few gems and left this plain. The piece that I made, I put on the back. Um, I just think that that turned out really nice. Um, so when then when you open it up, I didn't really do anything super special on the inside um, at this point. I left everything pretty much as is. I did trim these up and left the pages. So the pages will open up again like this. Okay, and then you have your middle insert here that will open up. And then this one here, during my tutorial, you saw my goof with everything. So I did fix that. I cut this out of one of the cut aparts and backed it on a piece of, of the cardstock, just a little scrap, and it covered that perfectly. And then it added the word faith to this. And then when you open it up, you have hope. Left this plain, but then on the back, I fussy cut out some flowers and this the heart here I added, and then this heart and butterfly I fussy cut out and popped it up with pop dots. And this will actually, you can tuck a picture underneath all of that. So um, I did add that. So I thought that was kind of a, a pretty little addition to that. Um, again, these pages will open up like this. And the last page, and then we have our last two tags in the last pocket here and you can totally add something here if you wanted to but anyways this is that's the finished album from the tutorial and that was this is actually the um design team package that i received this is heartfelt creations and it is rustic sunflower the paper is here again i um designed this album to work around all the cut aparts. So the, all the cut aparts, there's a lot of different ones and a lot of different sizes. There's uh, several six by six, but then all of the other ones are a little bit different shaped because you have lots of borders that you can use, um, all kinds of different things in this collection. So um, it's really a beautiful collection to work with, but that was my challenge was to use the cut aparts. So um, Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com. Grab your papers. And I hope you enjoyed the um, tutorial <laughs> and my goofs that I left in my tutorial. And um, yeah, have a good time with it. And it's just kind of a fun, different way of doing a binding. And yeah, I think that is about it. So um, with that, I will bid you a good day. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay crafty. And I will see you again next time with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.